Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be looking at the GDP deflator. We'll go over how to find nominal GDP, real GDP, and also that wonderful GDP deflator. When talking about GDP, it's important to understand how to find GDP, nominal GDP, and also what real GDP is. Make sure you've watched my other videos on all of those topics. That way this video will make complete sense. So before we get into how to find the GDP deflator, let's just really quick talk about how to find real GDP and nominal GDP. Nominal GDP, you're just gonna use the GDP formula. Just add it all up and then whatever you got, well, that's gonna be your GDP. At the same time too, if let's say that you have a specific problem in class that's only giving you a certain amount of variables, economic things that are occurring in maybe a smaller economy, you would just add the total up, whatever the quantity is demanded or sold, and then times that by the prices for that year. The total then would be your GDP. Now real GDP is a little bit different. Remember, real GDP is where we're taking inflation out of the equation. So what you would do is you will be given a base year. Now the base year is going to be the year that we'll use that value, the money value. So what we would do is, let's say we have this problem over here, where we can see inflation maybe has occurred. We can see the prices are different. Originally it was $5 for a good, and now all of a sudden it's 10. Well, if I want to find out what my real GDP is, what I'm going to do is take my quantity demanded for 2018, and I'm not going to times that by the price of 2018, I'll times it by my base year, which is 2016. So what happens then is I will get the real GDP for 2018. Now this is a really small example, but I'm just kind of showing you how to do the real GDP if you're not given certain variables. So if it's a smaller scale problem like this one, now, next let's go into actual, well, what's the GDP deflator? So I just went over nominal and real GDP really quick. The real reason we're watching this video right now, or at least I hope so, is to figure out GDP deflator. Now the GDP deflator is really important. Unlike other things we've looked at, like the CPI, the GDP deflator is going to show us the inflation rate for the entire country. This is looking at the entire society. Now to find the GDP deflator, what we're gonna do is use this formula. We'll take our GDP deflator, which is going to equal our nominal GDP over our real GDP. We'll then times that by 100. This will show then our inflation rate. So let's say our GDP deflator equaled 110. What that means is that our economy, we've actually seen inflation of 10%. Prices have gone up 10%. Now, there is a base year that's being used here to find our real GDP. So what we're seeing then is inflation of 10% from the base year. It's not looking at year to year. This is all comparing from our base year. So that's important to note. Also note that if we're looking at the base year, our GDP deflator is going to be 100. Base year will always be 100 because what we would be dividing by is the nominal GDP and the real GDP, which would be the same number. So we would get one. Then when you times it by 100, it equals 100. So again, Whenever our GDP deflator is above 100, we've had inflation. If it's ever below 100, we've actually had deflation. So let's say we have a GDP deflator of 85. Well, if it's at 85, that means prices have gone down since our base year. There is a decrease. At the same time too, if it's 150, well, it's gone up by 50%. So that is important to understand. Hopefully you have a good understanding now of just what GDP deflator is, how you can find it, and how to use the formula to calculate out these changes. I'm Mr. Sin, thank you for watching the video, and until next time, I'll see you online.